Hey everybody, it's Mike here, Mike's Weather Page. I wanted to do a video on the upcoming 2023 hurricane season. Talk about some early season predictions that are out and uh, some thoughts that I have on it and what we might expect. Uh, it's right around the corner. Be here before you know it. Time to start getting uh, getting prepared. The um, first date that we're going to be seeing things change is May 15th. That's when the uh, National Hurricane Center starts issuing these daily, 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, this is the old two-day forecast. This used to be a five-day forecast now they're going to be doing that seven days so we're gonna have a two-day outlook seven-day outlook that's when we get the little areas that they highlight potential areas and then the official season starts june 1st so those are two dates to remember uh, but we do have our first official um forecast that just came out it's from colorado state university okay. they're the big dogs that's the one everybody usually goes off of what they they predict um this the seasonal outlooks a couple times throughout the year uh, they're calling for a, a near normal season a little bit below normal a couple things they're basing that on off of is one that we're entering an El Nino style pattern coming up towards summer, and that usually reduces the number of storms, not the intensity. I'm going to show you, just the number of storms. Uh, we can still see some strong hurricanes, as I'm going to show you. Uh, so they're re uh, reducing numbers originally on that, but then they increase the numbers up a little bit. Because the water temperatures are above normal, they have been running a little bit above normal all year and some spots above way normal. Uh, some spots in the Gulf close to 10 degrees above normal right now. So uh, the storms that we might uh, be reduced as far as numbers, we're going to gain back because the waters are normal. It's thus the uh, kind of normal season. But let's talk a little bit about um, El Nino first and what that means. So El Nino is a, a weather pattern that actually is because of the weather out over the Pacific. And when that Pacific waters warm up a little bit it creates a higher shear upper level winds uh, through the caribbean and that helps prevent hurricanes from developing any uh, storms that might develop especially off of africa run into this wind shear and sometimes they get torn apart so usually during el nino years we have less hurricanes in tropical systems because of this increased shear going on through the caribbean because of el nino um, the El Nino uh, graphs that they put out weekly definitely are pointing to signs. This red means El Nino, that we're likelihood to be in an El Nino. You, you're going to hear a lot about that on the news. Um, port, important part of this video is, is to remind people the theme for me, especially lately, has been it only takes one. Okay, You're going to hear a lot about the tropical season is probably going to be slow. Great news! The tropical season is going to be slow because of El Nino. Well... That's kind of misleading because I want to show you we've had El Nino years that produce memorable uh, hurricanes, unfortunately, and uh, they were during El Nino years. So don't get wrapped up in that. Oh, it's going to be a great slow season. Everything's great. Uh, it, it just it might reduce the number of storms, as I'm going to show you. So anyway, good uh, data has been leaning towards uh, an El Nino pattern this summer. Um, we have great tools that the. Noah has here that you can look back in all these years, uh, any years that were red were waters that were above normal in the Pacific, thus creating an El Nino pattern. So I'm going to go through some years here. Uh, 92, believe it or not, with uh, Andrew, there was some thinking it was a neutral year, but there's been more support lately that it was an El Nino year. I'm going to start off with that. Brian Norcross reached out to me. He did confirm it was an El Nino year, uh, 2004, and others that we're going to get into here. So... El Nino years. So let's start off with Andrew. Andrew was during an El Nino year. As we know, it was a late August storm. It didn't it didn't form until you know August, towards the end of August. People thought the season you know was going to be dead because that was the first storm of the whole season. Look where it started though. We're going to talk about this. It's kind, it kind of avoided this uh, shear zone that we talked about with uh, El Nino. So it kind of went around that, as we know, and it uh, blew up into a Category Five. Not a good reminder for a lot of folks. So let's fast forward to uh, 2004. 2004 was an uh, El Nino year. And this is when I started Mike's Weather Page living in Florida. Um, we had four hurricanes that year through the state. And uh, again, you know, four storms during El Nino year. And I want to show you another graph here uh, where Gene and Francis, they actually hit the east coast of Florida. They kind of followed that similar path up, up around Cuba and Hispaniola. Interesting to keep an eye on that. Um, they went around that shear zone that is down in the Caribbean. And then, of course, Charlie uh, formed off the tip of Cuba, rapid intensification. We're going to get into that. 
And then Ivan was kind of the outlier. It kind of came through the whole um, zone here later in the season and impacted North Florida um, uh, for storm number four. So there you go. You know, Charlie, Gene, or Francis. Uh, again, take a note of Gene or Francis here as it kind of went around that shear zone. So 2004, another memorable year. Fast forward to 15. 15 was a uh, strong El Nino year, and we actually had one major hurricane that year. That was uh, Joe Queen. It formed right here around the Bahamas and uh, tore Bahamas up pretty bad. A lot of damage down there, and it took off to the northeast. Uh, again, signs that this is Joe Queen right here. We could still have a major hurricane in a strong El Nino year. Uh, weather, wind patterns pulled it to the northeast, but look how close it was to Florida. Uh, let's fast forward to 18. Uh, 18 was an El Nino year. Now, this is a great example. Two things I want to show you here. Uh, look at these storms here. Nothing made it through that. They call that the Caribbean graveyard sometimes because there's such strong upper-level winds. So interesting to note, 2018, none of these storms made it through this high shear zone. But 2018 also had Michael. Michael, almost like Charlie, got going right there off the tip of Cuba there in Yucatan. Three days, turned into a Cat 5. And the other storm of note was Florence. Florence went around all that again and impacted the East Coast. So we're seeing a trend during El Nino years of storms that go around Cuba, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and they come around a little bit higher up in um, the Atlantic. It could have something to do with the high pressure system, the way it's set up, because that's a subtropical jet down there. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. But I'm seeing a pattern here of storms that still find a way especially in that western caribbean and uh lower uh gulf of mexico so again 18 michael and florence you know and, and a great representation here these are all the storms during 18 and this pretty much shows you how nothing made it through uh the high shear zone that we see with uh, el nino uh one more year we're going to talk about is 2021 uh, 2021 all these numbers out there look at that 21 storms in 2021. That was the third most active season ever. Now, this was a, uh, not an El Nino year. This was actually La Nina year. La Nina year's more activity. But the po point I wanted to make on this, this 2021 was um, we had Ida. And out of all these other 20 storms, I don't think anybody could probably remember much about them other than Ida. Uh, so it brings to that point again, it only takes one. Even though we had a, a season that was the third most active season ever, we only had Ida that year that really was impactful. And of course, it went up to the Gulf of Mexico um, as a major hurricane. So you can have a lot of numbers, but it only takes one. So it doesn't mean anything. We can have a lot of numbers, then nobody gets affected, or we can have a year with half of that and everybody gets affected, and that's a far worse season. Okay, a couple things. 2022 hurricane outlook. Um, 2022, last year, it was the third year La Nina, and they really overestimated what we actually had. We were expecting a very busy season. Everybody was worked up. Actually, it ended up being a near average season, almost what they're calling for now, almost exactly the same numbers they're calling for this year that we had last year. Important to note, though, what happened in 2022 was we went through like the longest stretch ever. If you remember, it was from July to the end of August. We didn't have a named system in the Atlantic. Went through almost the, the whole month of August uh, without a name system. And that, you know, that's starting up the peak of season. Um, so everybody was like, what the heck's going on? You know, so we had, a, you know, highly active uh, predictions on, on 2022. And we went through one of the longest stretches ever with no, no storms. So even though we had a, a La Nina, everybody thought, oh, the conditions are great. Nobody knew why. So again, it goes back to, A, these long-range forecasts are so unpredictable. Uh and emotions swing on these emo uh, pr early season predictions. You know, less storms, yay. A lot of storms, whoa. A lot of storms here. Everybody was like, oh, my God, the season's over. And then what happened? We had Ian and Nicole um, later in the season. Again, it only took one. Uh, basically, Ian was the major hurricane uh, that everybody remember last year. And then, of course, Nicole was pretty bad um, toward the end of the year. So don't let your guard down. Things spring up. Um Andrew was the last uh, late August storm, 1992, in an El Nino year. Uh, another interesting thing was graphic here before I go to the next one here. But this is uh, 2004. This is 2022. Talk about how history might repeat itself. 2004, Gene and Charlie, almost the exact same path as Ian and Nicole. Not sure what's up with that, but I um, always think that's an interesting tidbit to throw out there. Doesn't have really much to do with this season other than 
maybe history repeats itself in weird ways with these El Nino patterns, like I was talking about with storms going up around, missing all that shear, and then homegrown systems um, that we got to worry about. All right, another big point I want to make here just happened recently with Fort Lauderdale. Um, you know, there's a there's a perception out there that when it's only a tropical storm or only a Category One, people uh, let their guards down a lot, if, a, a lot. And, and let me tell you what. Uh, flooding, tropical storm systems, uh, category one, flooding is sometimes way worse than wind. Um, these are storms that are very memorable here. Irene, Isaac, Sandy, Hermine, Matthew, Nate, Florence, Barry, Hannah, and ECE were all category one storms, okay? And they all were very uh, in impactful to people. Uh, Florence, $24 billion in damages because it slowed down. It was a um, uh, you know, lot of rainfall. And like I was just mentioning recently with Fort Lauderdale, we, you know, it wasn't tropical. It was a no-name storm, but we had 24 plus inches, 25, 26 inches. This sat right top rain training over one area and caused crazy problems uh, down in Florida. Uh, so these slow-moving tropical systems sometimes are worse than the big category major ones that the news focuses on. You know, these type of storms don't get a lot of press. You know, when a storm like Florence goes from a four to a three to a two to one, it's like downgraded, downgraded. Everybody's like, yay, downgraded, downgraded. And then guess what? It turns out to cause $24 billion in damage. People stopped talking about it because it wasn't a, a scary category four anymore. It was a, uh, you know, category one. And it didn't really make the headlines. It was a bigger problem than anybody expected. Another storm that was quite recent was 2019, um, turned out to be Tropical Storm Imelda. Uh, first advisory here, right off the coast of Texas. This is Tropical Depression 11. Uh, never got it past 40 miles an hour, but look at this. The rainfall that it created was tremendous. There was spots um, with Imelda that, that showed uh, 40 inches plus of rain. Purple was around 35 to 40 inches of rain. You talk about massive flooding here for Texas and the Louisiana parts of Louisiana. Uh, just total devastation for so many folks. And it was a 40 mile an hour tropical storm. So again, it's hard to get wrapped up on, on strength of, of speed when you have, you know, like Fort Lauderdale last week, uh, slow moving systems such as this. Harvey kind of stalled out, did the same thing. And, and again, well, that's what Florence did. So um, just remember that. All right, let's look at the water temperatures real quick. A lot of folks use these anomaly maps. They're put out weekly. Sometimes you can look at monthly. This is just a general look at it. Uh, anything white is around what the 30-year average is. Uh, reds and oranges are above average temperatures. And you can see the whole Atlantic Basin is pretty much above normal. What's got my eye and a lot of other people's um, is this. Let's go to U.S. here. Uh, is this temperature here through the Gulf. So we're averaging along the coast, six, seven, eight, there's, there's nine degrees above normal. Uh, this loop current here, five, six, seven, eight, everybody, you know, everybody in the Gulf, two, three, four, five degrees above normal. And this is the basis of bringing back up the numbers because of the water temperatures. So these homegrown systems is what, you know, these one, um, home, cl close to home, meaning to the co continental United States are the ones to watch. So much emphasis is put on, you know, Cape Verde systems coming across Africa. But the ones that blow up at the last second are the ones to watch. And as we saw during other LD New Years, which I pointed out, don't mind me as a drink for my Smurf cup. When you got kids, you just grab any cup you can get. <laughs> um, these water temperatures are, are what's going to really uh, be the storyline, in my opinion. Cause this helps bring the storms, helps bring the rainfall. It makes things a lot worse. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, another tool that we use here, this is tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, these are long range modeling. Um, these show you the sea surface temperature anomalies uh, that are expected. Um, they're, they're not 100% accurate, but the forecasters use them. This is, uh, again, off tropicaltidbits.com. But this is the month of August. Everything's a little above normal all the way through the whole basin here, all the way through the Gulf. This is September. And this is October. So modeling suggests warmer temperatures. There's a couple different um, products that put out the same thing. Uh, here's August, September, October, the peak months. So the water is expected to stay high. Another tool that they use is precipitation outlooks for anomalies. Green means more rain than normal. Yellow means less. Uh, this is July, August, and in September, we get a lot of moisture, and especially showing that Gulf of Mexico. So 
A lot of that's set up on the jet stream where they expect the jet stream to be at, allowing this uh, increased rains, which ultimately could mean low pressures and ultimately could mean tropical systems. So, you know, long range, September, starting to show a lot of homegrown activity here um, to watch out for. We'll see if that verifies. And in October, about the same. But, of course, the peak months are August, September, October. Uh, another tool that we can look at is the, the SIPS model here, August, September, October. So... Good confidence we're going to see increased moisture. Last slide here. Uh, you know, going back to that theme, it only takes one uh, and um, rapid intensification. So there's been 10 storms that have hit the continental United States 150 miles an hour or greater. And, and nine of those storms uh, were only tropical storms three days out. Rapid intensification is real. The warmer that Gulf of Mexico is, uh, the quicker these things have a chance to... Uh, intensify last year for example ian was a 70 mile an hour storm on monday 155 miles an hour on wednesday um of course we've had a lot of these re uh, recently too we had ida in 21 laura in 20 michael 18 so we've been on this pattern here of some strong storms here we'll see if that continues but look at where they all end up here this is all that area outside of that uh wind shear zone and we saw with 2018 you know nothing made it through here good for our caribbean friends for sure. Uh, it looks like, you know, less storms, uh, definitely less impactful for the folks in the Caribbean. Uh, but what we got to worry about is anything that squeaks by and ends up here in that Gulf of Mexico has a decent chance of uh, getting going. So so the theme is this year, as always, it, it only takes one. I'm going to stick to that. Uh, it seems like every season is defined by that one or two storms. Um, here's the names. Here's our new shirt design. I'm going to be releasing this May 15th. Uh, this is our 2023 hurricane season shirt. Hope you like it. And uh, as always, um, you know, appreciate all the support. We, we go live every day uh, during the season, Monday through Friday at 919 Eastern. I do a show called The Daily Brew. It's brought to you by our good friends at ABC Farm Wine and Spirits. And uh, we'll be doing that live. We go live at night when there's a storm and also go live on the weekend when there's a storm. Uh, you get plenty of updates. I do a lot of uh, afternoon updates on YouTube quickie five to ten minute non-live videos so i've been throwing those on instagram even tiktok uh and uh, uh twitter so there's all places to find me and um you know this is uh this one one award i got i was I always proud to show it you know that we did win the 2021 meteorology award uh for the tropics and uh you know we are listed on national weather service as a, a trusted source for weather so we really appreciate you following along our page and uh, all the all the fans and supporters out there okay so i hope you enjoyed this um you know, hopefully it spreads around I'm trying to get our youtube numbers up so like and share and comment appreciate that and uh we'll see what the season brings but again homegrown action looking back at history you know definitely southeast florida um we'll see if history repeats itself with those warm gulf waters you know i don't think we're going to see a, a slow season all right we'll see you later Bye bye